the house doesn't know day or night, you know, it's active all the time. She used crystal ball and mirrors and invited things into the house and didn't ask them to leave. Did Monica turn mirrors into portals? Portals that have never been closed? He had gotten scratched. We lifted up his shirt. It was forming as we lifted it up. If you're trying to talk to me, tell me not to leave. Come back. All right. There's something in the mirror. Wow. Holy crap. Who is it that likes to scratch people down here and likes to attack people? That's it, stand right in front of it. That sounded like a woman's voice right there. What the hell? Dude, no way. I am covered in f chills, dude. Within the city of Kokomo, Indiana, sits a house that by all appearances looks normal. But hiding within these walls are stories of tragedy, cruelty, sadness, witchcraft, and hauntings. The perfect recipe for ghost stories that the current owners believe open portals that have flooded the house with spirits and entities that aren't afraid to make themselves known to anyone who enters. How soon after you actually started investigating or even after you purchased the house, mm -hmm. how soon after did you start to experience unexplained right activity? Away. Right away. Right away. The house doesn't know day or night. You know, it's active all the time. The house was built in 1910 by Robert C. Davies, his wife, Louisa, um, two of the four children, Orville and Walter, resided here with him. Robert Davies passed away in 1939. His wake was here. Walter um, passed away at a young age. He was about 17 or 18. That was in 1916. His wake was here, and Orville passed away in 1920. The wife, Louisa, she passed away in 1950. Everyone passed away in the family from GI or colon type issues, except for Louisa, and she passed away from pneumonia. And you can imagine the energy that might be left behind here in this room from those wakes. This is their family's home. And exactly. back in those days, if when you died, you wanted to have your funeral, your wake in, in, in your home. So. Yeah. But Mike and Hope believe that the Davies family had such a strong connection to this house that they refused to leave, even after death. Very first time I ever walked through, I felt a, a presence right here in the middle of this room. And it was very hard to get away from it. That presence, that entity that you felt or picked up on, did you feel it was something negative? Do you think it was Mr. Davy? Do you I... think? I'm inclined to want to believe it was maybe Mr. Davies. Okay. Uh, maybe welcoming me to the house. Okay. Um, but it was a very, very strong presence right here. We've gotten so much response in the living room related to the Davies. We hear the old man coughs and sneezes. Sometimes it's just us girls in here. I was uh, vacuuming one day and staying right here in the, at the couch and um, I could smell an old man's cigar smoke, very strong. But it's right in this area only. We get a lot of response here lately from Louisa. She tends to not like a lot of people. We have a lot of shadow play right here in this hallway. But the Davies family aren't the only vocal spirits on the first floor. In the bedroom, it's believed that you can find a woman named Rita, who was abused and imprisoned by her husband, Paul. Rita's sister, Christine, had sent me a message on Facebook. The information was that she was in the third or fourth of seven bad marriages. Each husband seemed to abuse Rita just a little bit more. She was pretty much confined to the bedroom. She wasn't allowed to have very many friends or family come visit her. She wasn't allowed to leave. If he went to work, supposedly she locked the door. The story of her captivity is heartbreaking 
and that emotion can still be felt to this day. The room is decorated with dolls and toys, all of which Rita is said to play with. Kind of makes sense, because if you don't socialize with anybody, you kind of go backwards in how you think and process things, so you do kind of become childlike. We um, had a, a teen that was in here one time that uh, she sat against this wall, and she had a purse on it, and she had uh, something tugged back on her, and she thought somebody had pulled her. And then Hope had set the, stood there one night. I was over here against the wall, and she thought I had brushed up against her hair, and I wasn't even touching her. Do you think that's Rita? It very well could be. The energy that we get in there typically is childlike. She likes to pull on people, play with hair, um, tug on clothes. And as you can see, read his name here on the wall. And Rita was murdered by her seventh husband, but not in this house. This history so far would be more than enough to justify a haunting. But waiting for us on the second floor is a story much more chilling. The Davies house has a theme that stretches through its history, a theme of failed romantic relationships. This time, a woman named Monica, when asked by her ex to move out of the house, used witchcraft to make sure he'd never be comfortable in his own home again. She had supposedly opened some portals. She used crystal ball and mirrors and invited things into the house and didn't ask them to leave. And it was kind of a revenge tactic. Well, if you don't want me here, I'm going to make sure you remember me. Up until recently, all of the mirrors Monica used to open the portals were still in the house. But when the previous owner, Hope's stepfather, thought he was going to sell the house to someone else, he said the mirrors had to go. We had two mirrors upstairs that I didn't want on my personal property. And so we just kind of threw them on the side of the road into the river. They both shattered. When that sale fell through... And Mike and Hope ended up buying the house instead. They decided to buy new mirrors for the sake of paranormal research because the original ones were thought to be disposed of. But then they made a shocking discovery. The other mirrors were tossed along the road. And so this one here actually appeared back into our garage. And we have no idea how it got there. So we brought that back over here because I don't want it at my property. <laughs> If Monica truly succeeded in her revenge plot to open portals within the house, it's hard to tell what kind of spirits or entities have moved in to call the Davies house their home. But as we're about to find out, the darkest and most tragic story still waits for us in the basement. Deb was at the end of a relationship and um, she was being forced to move out. She was going to move in with an ex. and. Uh, that's not really what she had wanted, so she wrote a Dear John letter. So he says, well, see what state of mind she's in. I'm going to get all my ammo out, my guns out, take them across the street. And as he's coming down the staircase, he realizes, I may have forgotten one. So he rushes back up. He thinks that that's when she kicked the chair out from underneath her, is when he started to go downstairs and turn around. Um, when he went back down there later, she was of course gone and he cut her down and brought her up here to the living room and couldn't revive her. Um, as you can tell these right here is steel PVC conduit. Yeah. Okay, this is where she hung herself here. Another failed relationship, this time fatal. The tragic ending to Deb's story has led many investigators to believe that her spirit may still be here in this basement. I came down here one day while the rest of our, our paranormal family team was upstairs and it was all dark down in here and as I turned I saw a silhouette of a look like a female figure. This whole area in here was all warm except this doorway right here. It was cold. But the paranormal family team believes that something else may reside down here in the basement feeding on the tragic history of this house. This is where, this is where the mother load for me happens right here. Me and another fellow was standing in this position right here. I had an old man laugh come up to me in my ear and was very um, vigorous about it. <laughs> yeah. And the guy next to me, he had gotten scratched. There's no way he could have 
scratched himself. We lifted up his shirt. It was forming as we lifted it up. Um, scared the snot out of me. <laughs> that was one of my first experiences and I was like, wow. <laughs> Tell me paranormal ain't true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not just the physical attacks. It seems this entity likes to play psychological games as well. We were downstairs. My son likes, at that time, he liked to hear cowboy boots tapping on the concrete floor because he's um, mildly autistic. So the noise is a big thing for him. And so he couldn't walk quietly. We're watching him walk in front of all the flashlights and he's not making a sound. So we were upstairs cleaning one day. I was kind of in mid conversation or whatever with him when I felt a presence behind me. So I turned around to look to make sure it was my son. And as I'm turning back, I realized that the eyes are black. 100% look just like him. The bouncing curls, everything. A couple minutes later, here comes my son walking up the stairs. It's hard to tell what brought this dark entity into the house. Could it be the constant heartache and tragedy? Or maybe it entered through the open portals upstairs. Or is it a combination of both? Either way, we have our work cut out for us tonight. So now, Dave, we know a little bit more about the Davies house. And we know there were deaths in this house. There was extreme trauma and sadness. And from what they told us, there was ritualistic witchcraft performed in the house to open portals to the spirit world in this very room that we're standing in. I'm excited to set up cameras and to leave this house empty for an hour to see what it can pick up on during our abandonment session. Are you ready to get started? I'm more than ready. Let's get everything set up, get our cameras placed, and get out the door so we can see what we can get tonight. Let's do it. This is Paranormal Quest, the Davies house. Alright, so we are getting ready to leave for abandonment. We have the house set up with cameras, equipment, some trigger objects, some things that we feel would get a reaction. We're going to leave for an hour. Find out what happens inside the Davies house when it's completely empty. Right now we're standing in Rita's room. The room of a woman who was almost like a prisoner in her own home because she was stuck in a bad marriage. They say she almost has a childlike energy. So we have this doll set up right here with multiple of these motion activated cat balls set up here as well as the music box, which is set up right here, as you can see. If anything moves in this area in front of it, it's gonna set that off. Out here in the main living room area, we have an action cam set up to cover that entire area. You can basically see from the front door all the way through, and if anything moves, anything happens, we'll know because that area is wired with motion sensors, which will go off if anything moves through that area. Downstairs in the basement, we have a camera set up in the room where Deborah lost her life. There's a lot of speculation, a lot of mystery surrounding her death, and hopefully she can give us some answers as to what happened, but there's a REM pod sitting right over by where she passed away. Upstairs on the second floor, that is the area where a woman who lived here named Monica ended up performing rituals which Hope and Mike believe may have opened a portal or multiple portals inside the Davies house. And one last thing I wanted to mention here about Rita's room. We also have the plasma ball set up and Mike and Hope told us that they've actually seen something touch it. And if something does actually come in contact with it, with static energy, we will notice, we will see. So we're gonna leave the house empty. You ready, Dave? See what happens while we're gone? Let's do it. Let's go. That's us passing through, crushing our cat ball. Scream directly in the recorder. No, the acting camera. <laughs> 
Our abandonment sessions are a great way not only to get a baseline within the location, but also to see what paranormal activity occurs when the house is completely empty. With the Davies house covered with cameras on all three floors, if something happens, we're sure to capture it. But to our surprise, the house is eerily silent for almost the entire 70 minutes that we're gone. None of the equipment triggered at all, and the only sounds that we captured were all too distant to determine what caused them. It is disappointing to have an abandonment session so quiet, but what we are about to experience and capture when we return will make up for it entirely. Dude, no way. All right. What the hell? Hold up. We weren't moving in front of it. The motion sensor is set up right here. Pointing out towards this open room right here. And as Dave and I are getting the SLS camera together, that motion sensor just went off. We're good to go. Oh, yeah. You ready? Yep. Rita or Mr. Um, Davies or any of the Davies family, if you walked in front of that little box and made it go off, made it chime like that, can you do it again for us when we're up here? That was weird. What happened? There was a figure there as soon as I turned this around and then it disappeared. Don't. What did it say? Couldn't make it. It sounded like don't. But it, I could have misheard it because we're all the way downstairs. We know that you don't like cameras. We've heard that. But we've got a lot of them tonight, so... The SLS camera that Dave is using maps shapes by projecting infrared lasers that bounce back into the sensor. If the camera detects a human shape, it's marked with a stick figure. It's possible that when Dave turned around, the sensor detected a human shape we couldn't see with our own eyes. And when it disappeared, almost as fast as it appeared, it shot upward. Meanwhile, the ghost tube on the second floor picks up on fluctuations in magnetic fields and chooses a word within an 850 word dictionary corresponding to those readings. And it's particularly weird to us that Mike and Hope told us off camera that they found the Davies family doesn't like video being recorded. And as we briefly capture a figure on the SLS camera in the kitchen, it shoots upward, almost immediately followed by the ghost tube on the second floor saying, Don't. It could be a coincidence but it's a very odd sequence of events, and we've only just started this session. Ooh, that's me, sorry. Talk with me. We're here to talk. Can you see that little red light on the ground over there? Can you try to turn it on? Try and pick it up. It's right in front of me here, I'm pointing at it. If there's anyone up here that came through one of Monica's portals, 
the doorways. My name is Ryan and this is Dave and we're here to talk to you. We don't care who you are, whether you're human or inhuman, whether you mean well or to do us harm, we want you to show yourself to us so that we can tell your story right in front of Dave there on the chair. There's an Ouija board or a talking board or a spirit board. And if you could move that planchette, we'd appreciate it. Use your energy, or you can use our energy to touch it. Whoa. What was that? That wasn't you? No, that was down at the bottom of the stairs. Somebody down there? We heard someone was getting scratched and all kinds of crazy stuff was happening in here. Who's attacking people in this house? Is there something that travels through this mirror? Did Monica turn mirrors into portals? Portals that have never been closed? Whoa. Was that you? No. Wasn't me either. It was right over here. Right by the mirrors. Yeah. Actually, by that one mirror that reappeared, they said. Oh, that's right. This mirror right here is the one that they said was up here before but reappeared. One of the originals. Is this how the monster gets in and out of the house? The one that scratches people? West. Ooh. It just said something. Mirror. Mirror! Dude, no way. <laughs> That's me. It said mirror, man. What? As soon as I picked it up and moved it. As soon as you moved that mirror. That. Me too. It said something before it said mirror. Yeah, I know. But I couldn't make chair. it. Chair. And I, what did I lean it up against? The chair. Holy I am crap covered in f chills, dude. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. Maybe maybe it's true. Maybe facing the mirrors together does create a portal. Is that how it works? Dave is moving the REM pod. Dude, that was some responsiveness unlike any we've had. To have you pick up that mirror and lean it against the chair and then have it say mirror chair. That's just too weird. Ooh. It's just said something. Mirror. Mirror! Dude, no way. <laughs> That's me. It said mirror, man. What? It said something before it said mirror. 
Yeah, I know. But I couldn't make chair. it. Chair. Chair. And I, what did I lean it up against? The chair. You know, interestingly enough, that happened. When the door was shut, when the door was closed. Do you not like the door being closed? That's so weird, I was gonna suggest that you do that. You know what's weird? What? If you think about it, it's like that door was shut. And it's saying that it was like, even though the door is shut, I still know what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. I know where you just put that mirror. Right. Love. What do you love? Would you feel comfortable putting your left and right hand on both mirrors? Yeah. Is this how you enter this house? Did Monica open a passageway for you through the mirrors? Can you roll that back? We're gonna take it away. Invisible. What if I turn all these mirrors around? We'll start with this one. Whoa. What? There's something in the mirror. Really? Not the one you're touching. The one furthest away. This one? The one closest to. Oh, it's just gone now. That is weird. That is weird. This SLS camera has been sitting stationary for almost 20 minutes. And the mirror hasn't moved. If it was reading the mirror as a false positive, it would have done it almost immediately. And we know that this isn't Dave's reflection either. As that can be seen here, with only the reflection of his arm in view. And when Dave points at the mirror that the figure is in, it just disappears. So we have no idea what the SLS camera could be mapping in this mirror. If you have any opinions on this, let us know what you think down in the comments. Just for s and giggles, go stand in front of that mirror that is still turned around. Stand to your right. Reach out. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing's showing up in that. Yeah. Nothing's showing up in the mirror now. An SLS figure showed up in that mirror. Wow. Not over the mirror, in the mirror. Wow. This is EVP session. Second session, first floor. Oh, was that you? No. It's pointed back toward the stairs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Roll it. Dave Audio, second session. Whoa. Is there someone over by the stairs?
Do you like hearing that music? Could you step right in front of it so it plays the music longer for us so we know that it's you? That's it. Stand right in front of it, please. Thank you. Rita, there's a doll sitting on the bed that we left for you. If you grab it, it'll make those lights turn on. Rita, do you sometimes try and come out into the hall here? Is that why they see shadows? Rita, if you want to play with some of these other toys, I'm going to put this ball right here. And all you have to do is light it up and touch it. But I'm going to sit down right here with you now. And I have a box in my hand that if you walk up to me and you try and use this to speak, we can hear your voice. And you can try and say your name just like I'm saying mine. Ryan, can you say Rita? Rita, were you locked in this house, unable to get out because your husband wouldn't let you? Which one of these toys is your favorite? What'd you hear? It sounded like a strange voice that came through there. Hmm. If you don't like us being in the in your room, all you have to do is tell us to get out and we'll be we'll, we'll be happy to leave. As I was reviewing the spirit box session, I heard what sounded like a woman's voice, but it wasn't coming through the spirit box. You may need headphones to fully hear and understand what she's saying, but take a listen and see what you think. Mr. Davies, are you here? I'm here. Did you hear that? I thought it said coming. Oh, it sounded like I'm here to me. Whoa. Mr. Davies, are you on your way? Did it say basement? It sounded like it said basement. I thought it did say basement. Yeah. Basement. Basement. Did, what? Did it say basement? It 
It sounded like it said basement. Who's the person in the basement that likes to scratch people and corner them and make them feel uncomfortable? Are we going to hear from them when we go down there? What? Did you hear that? No. It goes, yeah, <laughs> really loud. Are we going to hear from them when we go down there? That's awesome. We can't wait to hear from him or whoever they are. Rita, if you can hear me, my name is Dave. That's my friend Ryan out there. And we just came here to talk to you tonight. And you can talk back to us through this equipment that we have around here like this. Or through this box that I'm holding in my hand right here. Rita, can you say yes or no whether or not you're here? The way it sounds is that you had a very rough life here in this house. Is that true? What was that? What? That sounded like a woman's voice right there. It did. Did he force you to stay in here? Very quiet on this level. It is. I don't know why, I just feel very drawn to this room. To that room. Could be a safe space. Maybe. Maybe Rita felt safe in here. Yeah. After all the stuff she was put through. There's only one part of the Davies house that we've yet to investigate. This is where the mother load for me happens, right here. Um, when he went back down there later, she was, of course, gone. This is where she hung herself here. And as I turned, I saw a silhouette of a, look like a female figure. What, whatever's in the basement seems to be more powerful than she is. He had gotten scratched. We lifted up his shirt. It was forming as we lifted it up. With so much darkness and tragedy in the basement, this will be a perfect place for a sensory deprivation estes session. But if it is true that the portals that Monica opened are on the second floor, we need to cover that area as well. So we'll put a thermal imaging camera pointing from the room with the mirrors facing toward the stairs on the opposite end to see if anything manifests on this floor while we're making contact in the basement. All right, Deborah, my name is Ryan and I'm here to talk to you. Five. Bye or five? Are there five of you here? I'm gonna shut the door to the basement. We can have some alone time, some quiet time. Is there something that's not so nice down here? Is there something that means to do people harm? The body. The body. Right after Dave receives this response, the thermal imaging camera on the second floor captures a very strange anomaly. A cold signature stretching from the bottom of the frame to the top, appears out of nowhere. It's slender and thin, but very noticeable. And we've never seen anything like this before. It's not a cold spot or a humanoid shape, but instead a perfectly straight, 
line of cold energy. Could this be some sort of tear between our worlds? Is this the portal we've heard so much about? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Whose body? Is there something on the body that would give more clues? We're not. We're not. We're not what? Who is it that likes to scratch people down here and likes to attack people? Fact. Who is it that likes to pretend to be Ray? You know Ray. There was a male voice there. I couldn't make that one out. What do you get? from pretending to be someone that you're not. It sounded like it said sweet pepper. Can you tell me? Runner? I'm not running. Are you running? You. Is it working? Is it working? Oh, it's working. Are you mad at us because we turned the mirrors around? Would you like it if we turn the mirrors back around? Something back here? Do you want me to come back there? Put me back here, maybe? Who put you back there? Did someone conjure you back there? Did someone open a doorway that they couldn't close inside this house? Deborah, did someone hurt you? What 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 happened? Why did you end up dying the way that you did? Where'd you go? Why'd you stop talking? There was a male voice. I couldn't make it out. Who is the man that's speaking to us? My name is Ryan and that's Dave. Tell us your name so we know who we're talking to. I'm going to ask the questions. You speak through Dave. Male voice, couldn't make it out. Hmm. Could you speak more clearly? Take a step closer to Dave so we can hear what you're saying and then try and speak again for us. Slang. Slang or slant or something like that. Hmm. I'm going to ask again because no one seems to answer or say anything. Who is it that copies people? Something return. Who is it that mimics people? That's that's kind of our thing. That's kind of your thing, huh? It's not a thing that's very mean and sadistic. I don't care if it's your thing or not. I tell you what, go to Dave right now and tell him 
how many fingers I'm holding up right now. How many fingers am I holding up? There's no. There is no. There's no what? Talking to, or something like that? If you don't want to talk to me, I'll leave. Convince me not to leave. If you are trying to talk to me, tell me not to leave. Go back, Go back or come back. All right. I'm coming. Will you tell me what happened to Brent, uh, to Deborah? Tell me exactly what happened to Deborah in this basement. He beat her. Who did? Who beat Deborah? Perfect. Was someone abusive to Deborah? That hovers. That hovers. That hovers. We're so sorry if that's true and he was actually mean and he something happened. Something happened. What happened? Does everyone know the true story, the real story of what happened, or is there more to it that people don't know? Hello? Speak to me or came to me? I'm trying to speak to you. I'm right here. Tell me what he did. Tell me who it was that did the things to you that caused you so much pain, Deborah. Where'd you go? This was probably one of the most interesting Estes Method Spirit Box sessions we've ever performed. While we didn't get more information about the dark entity, a man seemed to be giving us information about Deborah's tragic situation, and whoever it was seemed to be able to hear us. If you are trying to talk to me, tell me not to leave. Go back. Go back or come back. But apparently couldn't give us all the details. Hello? Whatever secrets are being kept in this basement weren't meant for us to hear. The Davies house has a fascinating history, and the legends of this house won't stay hidden for long. As more paranormal investigations are conducted, this house very well could become a beacon for paranormal research. Um, so we are on Facebook. We have the Davies house. Um, you can also call 765 623-8267. That's my cell phone number, and we'll be glad to get you booked. All right, guys, I think we're going to call it a night here at the Davies house. If you've made it this far in the episode, we want to say thank you for that. It really helps us out. It also helps us out if you hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment down below. Tell us what your favorite part of this episode was and maybe some places you'd like to see us go in the future. You can also become a channel member to our channel and you can see all of our episodes a day or sometimes two days early as well as behind the scenes footage photos and a secret instagram account that you don't know about and you can also get all of those perks if you join our patreon as well so once again thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of the episode we will see you next time until then keep it creepy